Fundamental Skills for the Microbiology Laboratory. Bunsen Burner. A Bunsen burner is a common piece of laboratory equipment that produces a single open gas flame. The design of a Bunsen burner includes a vertical metal tube connected to a weighted base. The base includes a nozzle with rubber tubing attached which connects to the natural gas source on the lab bench. The gas flows up from the base through a small hole at the bottom of the barrel. There are open slots on the side of the tube bottom to admit air into the gas stream. The gas mixes with air at the bottom of the tube and then rises to the top of the Bunsen burner where it can be lit with a match. When the Bunsen burner is not in use, the flame may be lowered using the lever at the bottom. Attach the hose of the Bunsen burner to the gas jet. Turn the gas on and light the burner with a match. When properly adjusted, a Bunsen burner produces a flame with two cones. This may be achieved by rotating the metal collar which monitors the influx of air. Sterilization of the inoculating loop is done in the hottest part of the flame, the tip of the inner cone. Heat fixing bacterial smears on slides and sterilizing the mouths of open glassware items may be done in the outer cone. Aseptic Technique Aseptic techniques are methods used to minimize the chances of contamination or infection by microbes from the environment. Common aseptic transfers and inoculation methods. Sterilize inoculating loop by heating in the Bunsen burner flame. Flame first the loop end and then the entire wire, making sure that all parts are heated to an orange color. Allow the wire to cool before touching it since it will burn you or placing it on or in a culture which will cause the dispersal of microbes into the air. Aseptic transfer of bacteria for maintenance of stock cultures and identification of unknowns. Transfer of bacterial broth culture. First, sterilize the inoculating loop. Then, gently mix the culture containing the bacteria by rolling the tube between the palms of your hands or by shaking the tube with one finger holding the cap in place. Grasp the tube's cap with your little finger and remove it by pulling the tube away from the cap. Hold the cap in your little finger during the transfer. Flame the mouth of the tube by passing it through the Bunsen burner flame. Hold the open tube at an angle to prevent airborne contamination. Holding the loop hand still, move the tube up the wire until the tip is in the broth. Continuing to hold the loop hand still, remove the tube from the wire. There should be a film of broth in the loop. Flame the mouth of the tube as before and replace the cap. Inoculating the sterile broth tube. Remove the cap of the sterile medium with the little finger of your loop hand and hold it there. Flame the mouth of the tube by passing it through the Bunsen burner flame. Hold the open tube at an angle to minimize airborne contamination. Gently swirl the loop in the broth. Withdraw the tube from the inoculating loop. Flame the mouth of the tube as before and replace its cap. Sterilize the loop as before by heating it in the Bunsen burner flame. It is especially important to flame the entire wire loop due to the bacterial contamination. Label the tube with your initials and incubate the culture for the appropriate temperature and time. Obtaining a sample with an inoculating loop from an agar plate. Flame the loop. Lift the lid of the agar plate but continue to use it as a cover to prevent contamination from above. Touch the loop to an uninoculated portion of the plate to cool it. Obtain a small amount of bacterial growth by gently touching a colony with the wire tip. 
Do not scoop an entire colony. Touching the colony is sufficient. Carefully remove the loop from the plate and hold it still as you replace the lid. Transfer of the specimen on the loop may be made to either a broth or an agar plate. Technique of isolating organisms in pure culture, flame streak technique. A microbial culture consisting of two or more species is a mixed culture, whereas a pure culture contains only a single species. Proper technique of flame streaking an agar plate will result in well-separated and isolated individual bacterial colonies from a mixture of many organisms. A colony is the progeny of a single bacterium. Flame streak technique. Use your china marker to draw a T on the bottom of your agar plate. This will serve as a guideline for streaking the plate. Gently mix the stock culture tube to distribute the organisms. Flame bacterial loop. Using aseptic technique, pick up a loopful of the mixed broth culture. Streak the mixed culture back and forth in the first section of the agar plate. Streaking is a light gliding motion. You do not want to cut into the agar surface with the loop. When the streaking is completed in the first section, flame the loop to sterilize the loop. Rotate the plate for inoculation of the next section. Beginning at one end of the first streak pattern, draw three to four streak lines from the first to second section. Then continue streaking the second section only. When the second section is completely streaked, flame the loop. Rotate the plate for inoculation of the last section. Here you will draw three to four streak lines from the second section to the third and then continue streaking the third section. Sterilize the loop. Incubate the plate at 37 degrees C in an inverted position. The flame streak technique may also be referred to as a diluting technique. There is only one loop of inoculum for the first section. Afterwards, there is only a transfer of bacteria from one section to another. And remember, the bacterial number is also decreased by the sterilization of the loop when one section is completely streaked. Technique of preparing films from solid medium. Using your china marker, which may also be called a wax pencil, draw a ring on a clean slide. Place one loopful of tap water in the center of the ring. Sterilize inoculating loop. Prepare a film of the colony by lightly touching a well-isolated colony. Mix the colony material on the inoculating loop with the water on the slide. Allow film to air dry. It will be slightly cloudy. When the film is completely dry, heat fix the slide by passing the bottom of the slide three times through the flame. Heat fixing the smear kills the bacteria, makes them adhere to the slide, and coagulates their protein for better staining. Place the heat fix slide on the staining grid in the center of the lab table. Gram stain, differential staining procedure. Stain slide using gram staining technique. Flood the slide with crystal violet for two minutes. Wash off stain with water. Pick slide up and tap off the excess water. Flood the slide with grams iodine for two minutes. Do not remove the cap from the reagent bottle. There is a point on the cap and a ridge on the neck of the bottle. Align the point 
with the ridge and you will be able to flood the slide. If the point and ridge are not aligned, the Graham's iodine will not pour. You may dispense the other reagents in the Graham staining procedure in the same manner. Wash off stain with water. Tap off the excess water. Flood slide with 95% ethyl alcohol for about 15 seconds until decolorized. Wash off with water. Tap off the excess water. Flood the slide with safranin for 30 seconds. Wash off stain with water. And dry by blotting. Place one drop of immersion oil on the slide. Place the slide on the stage of the microscope. Attach the slide securely with the stage clips. Rotate the oil objective into place. The oil objective is the longest objective and it is also labeled oil. When the objectives are rotated, there is a resounding click when they are in the proper position. Turn on the microscope light source. Rotate the coarse focus knob in a clockwise direction towards the slide until you feel resistance. Continue this clockwise rotation with the fine focus knob. Next, turn the coarse focus knob counterclockwise while looking through the ocular lens until you see a flash of light, then fine adjust.